The Gospel according to Luke Greek, Euangelion Kata Lucan translate. Euangelion Kata Lucan, also called the Gospel of Luke, or simply Luke, is the third of the four canonical Gospels. It tells of the origins, birth, ministry, atonement, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. Luke is the longest of the four Gospels and the longest book in the New Testament. Together with Acts of the Apostles, it makes up a two volume work from the same author, called Luke Acts. The cornerstone of Luke Acts theology is salvation history. The author's understanding that God's purpose is seen in the way he has acted, and will continue to act, in history. It divides the history of first-century Christianity into three stages, with the Gospel making up the first two of these, the arrival among men of Jesus the Messiah, from his birth to the beginning of his earthly mission in the meeting with John the Baptist followed by his earthly ministry, passion, death and resurrection concluding the Gospel story per se. The gospel sources are the Gospel of Mark for the narrative of Christ's earthly life, the sayings collection called the Q source for his teachings, and a collection of material called the L for Luke source, which is found only in this gospel. Luke Acts does not name its author. According to church tradition this was Luke the Evangelist, the companion of Paul, but while this view is still occasionally put forward the scholarly consensus emphasizes the many contradictions between Acts and the authentic Pauline letters. The most probable date for its composition is around 80–110 AD, and there is evidence that it was still being revised well into the 2nd century. Composition and setting Textual history Autographs original copies of Luke and the other Gospels have not been preserved, as is typical for ancient documents. The texts that survive are third generation copies, with no two completely identical. The earliest witnesses the technical term for, written manuscripts for Luke's Gospel fall into two families, with considerable differences between them the Western and the Alexandrian, and the dominant view is that the Western text represents a process of deliberate revision, as the variations seem to form specific patterns. The fragment p display style math frac p four is often cited as the oldest witness. It has been dated from the late second century, although this dating is disputed. The oldest complete texts are the fourth century Codex Sinaiticus and Vaticanus, both from the Alexandrian family. Codex Bezi, a fifth or sixth century Western text type manuscript that contains Luke in Greek and Latin versions on facing pages, appears to have descended from an offshoot of the main manuscript tradition, departing from more familiar readings at many points. Topic: <laughs> Luke Acts, Unity, Authorship, and Date. The Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles make up a two-volume work which scholars call Luke Acts. Together they account for 27.5% of the New Testament, the largest contribution by a single author, providing the framework for both the Church's liturgical calendar and the historical outline into which later generations have fitted their idea of the story of Jesus. The author is not named in either volume. According to a church tradition dating from the 2nd century he was the Luke named as a companion of Paul in three of the letters attributed to Paul himself, but, a critical consensus emphasizes the countless contradictions between the account in Acts and the authentic Pauline letters, Thyssen and Mers 1998, p.32. An example can be seen by comparing Acts accounts of Paul's conversion Acts chapter 9 verses 1 to 31, 22-6-21, and 26-9-23 with Paul's own statement that he remained unknown to Christians in Judea after that event Galatians chapter 1 verses 17-24, he admired Paul, but his theology was significantly different from Paul's on key points and he does not in Acts represent Paul's views accurately. He was educated, a man of means, probably urban, and someone who respected manual work, although not a worker himself. This is significant, because more high-brow writers of the time looked down on the artisans and small business people who made up the early Church of Paul and were presumably Luke's audience. Analysis of the Gospel presents the possibility that Luke may have been a woman. The eclipse of the traditional attribution to Luke the companion of Paul has meant that an early date for the Gospel is now rarely put forward. 
Some experts date the composition of the combined work to around 80 to 90 AD, although some others suggest 90 to 110, and there is evidence both textual, the conflicts between Western and Alexandrian manuscript families, and from the Marcionite controversy. Marcion was a 2nd century heretic who produced his own version of Christian scripture based on Luke's gospel and Paul's epistles that Luke Acts was still being substantially revised well into the 2nd century. Topic Genre, models and sources Luke Acts is a religio-political history of the founder of the Church and his successors, in both deeds and words. The author describes his book as a narrative, diegesis, rather than as a gospel, and implicitly criticizes his predecessors for not giving their readers the speeches of Jesus and the Apostles, as such speeches were the mark of a full Report, the vehicle through which ancient historians conveyed the meaning of their narratives. He seems to have taken as his model the works of two respected classical authors, Dionysus of Halicarnassus, who wrote A History of Rome, and the Jewish historian Josephus, author of A History of the Jews. All three authors anchor the histories of their respective peoples by dating the births of the founders Romulus, Moses and Jesus and narrate the stories of the founders' births from God, so that they are sons of God. Each founder taught authoritatively, appeared to witnesses after death, and ascended to heaven. Crucial aspects of the teaching of all three concerned the relationship between rich and poor and the question of whether foreigners were to be received into the people. The author seems to have used as his sources the Gospel of Mark, the sayings collection called the Q source, and a collection of material called the L for Luke source. Mark, written around 70 AD, provided the narrative outline, but Mark contains comparatively little of Jesus' teachings. For these Luke turned to Q, which consisted mostly, although not exclusively, of sayings. Most scholars are reasonably sure that Q existed and that it can be reconstructed. Mark and Q account for about 64% of Luke. The remaining material, known as the L source, is of unknown origin and date. Most Q and L source material is grouped in two clusters, Luke chapter 6 verse 17-8-3 and 951 to 18:14, and L source material forms the first two sections of the gospel, the preface and infancy and childhood narratives. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Audience and authorial intent. Luke was written to be read aloud to a group of Jesus followers gathered in a house to share the Lord's Supper. The author assumes an educated Greek-speaking audience, but directs his attention to specifically Christian concerns rather than to the Greco-Roman world at large. He begins his gospel with a preface addressed to Theophilus. The name means, lover of God, and could be an individual or simply any Christian. Here he informs Theophilus of his intention, which is to lead his reader to certainty through an orderly account of the events that have been fulfilled among us. He did not, however, intend to provide Theophilus with a historical justification of the Christian faith. Did it happen? But to encourage faith. What happened, and what does it all mean? Topic. Structure and content Topic. Structure of Luke's Gospel Following the author's preface addressed to his patron and the two birth narratives John the Baptist and Jesus, the Gospel opens in Galilee and moves gradually to its climax in Jerusalem. A brief preface addressed to Theophilus stating the author's aims Birth and infancy narratives for both Jesus and John the Baptist, interpreted as the dawn of the promised era of Israel's salvation. Preparation for Jesus' messianic mission, John's prophetic mission, his baptism of Jesus, and the testing of Jesus' vocation. The beginning of Jesus' mission in Galilee, and the hostile reception there. The central section, the journey to Jerusalem, where Jesus knows he must meet his destiny as God's prophet and Messiah. His mission in Jerusalem, culminating in confrontation with the leaders of the Jewish temple. His last supper with his most intimate followers, followed by his arrest, interrogation, and crucifixion. God's validation of Jesus as Christ, events from the first Easter to the Ascension, showing Jesus' death to be divinely ordained, in keeping with both scriptural promise and the nature of Messiahship, and anticipating the story of Acts. Topic. Parallel structure of Luke-Acts 
The structure of Acts parallels the structure of the Gospel, demonstrating the universality of the divine plan and the shift of authority from Jerusalem to Rome. The Gospel, the Acts of Jesus, the presentation of the child Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem Jesus 40 days in the desert Jesus in Samaria, Judea Jesus in the Decapolis Jesus receives the Holy Spirit Jesus preaches with power the power of the Spirit Jesus heals the sick Death of Jesus The Apostles are sent to preach to all nations the Acts of the Apostles Jerusalem Forty days before the Ascension Samaria Asia Minor Pentecost, Christ's followers receive the Spirit The Apostles preach with the power of the Spirit The Apostles heal the sick Death of Stephen, the first martyr for Christ Paul preaches in Rome Topic. Theology Topic. Luke's. Salvation history Luke's theology is expressed primarily through his overarching plot, the way scenes, themes and characters combine to construct his specific worldview. His salvation history stretches from the creation to the present time of his readers, in three ages, first, the time of the Law and the Prophets. The period beginning with Genesis and ending with the appearance of John the Baptist Luke chapter 1 verse 5 minus 3 to 1, second, the epic of Jesus, in which the kingdom of God was preached Luke chapter 3 verse 2 minus 24 to 51, and finally the period of the church, which began when the risen Christ was taken into heaven, and would end with his second coming. Topic. Christology Luke's understanding of Jesus, his Christology, is central to his theology. One approach to this is through the titles Luke gives to Jesus, these include, but are not limited to, Christ, Messiah, Lord, Son of God, and Son of Man. Another is by reading Luke in the context of similar Greco-Roman divine savior figures Roman emperors are an example, references which would have made clear to Luke's readers that Jesus was the greatest of all saviors. A third is to approach Luke through his use of the Old Testament, those passages from Jewish scripture which he cites to establish that Jesus is the promised Messiah. While much of this is familiar, much also is missing, for example, Luke makes no clear reference to Christ's pre-existence or to the Christian's union with Christ, and makes relatively little reference to the concept of atonement, perhaps he felt no need to mention these ideas, or disagreed with them, or possibly he was simply unaware of them. Even what Luke does say about Christ is ambiguous or even contradictory. For example, according to Luke chapter 2 verse 11 Jesus was the Christ at his birth, but in Acts chapter 10 verses 37 to 38 he becomes Christ at the resurrection, while in Acts chapter 3 verse 20 it seems his messiahship is active only at the parousia, the second coming. Similarly, in Luke chapter 2 verse 11 he is the Savior from birth, but in Acts chapter 5 verse 31 he is made Savior at the resurrection, and he is born the Son of God in Luke chapter 1 verses 32 to 35, but becomes the Son of God at the resurrection according to Acts chapter 13 verse 33. Many of these differences may be due to scribal error, but others were deliberate alterations to doctrinally unacceptable passages, or the introduction by scribes of proofs for their favorite theological tenets. An important example of such deliberate alterations is found in Luke's account of the baptism of Jesus, where virtually all the earliest witnesses have God saying, This day I have begotten you. Luke has taken the words of God from Psalm chapter 2, an ancient royal adoption formula in which the king of Israel was recognized as God's elect. This reading is theologically difficult, as it implies that God is now conferring status on Jesus that he did not previously hold. It is unlikely, therefore, that the more common reading of Luke chapter 3 verse 22 God says to Jesus, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased, is original. Topic. The Holy Spirit, the Christian community, and the Kingdom of God The Holy Spirit plays a more important role in Luke Acts than in the other Gospels. Some scholars have argued that the Spirit's involvement in the career of Jesus is paradigmatic of the universal Christian experience, others that Luke's intention was to stress Jesus' uniqueness as the prophet of the final age. 
It is clear, however, that Luke understands the enabling power of the Spirit, expressed through non-discriminatory fellowship, all who believed were together and had all things in common, to be the basis of the Christian community. This community can also be understood as the kingdom of God, although the kingdom's final consummation will not be seen till the Son of Man comes, on a cloud, at the end time. Equals 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 Christians versus Rome and the Jews equals 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 Luke needed to define the position of Christians in relation to two political and social entities, the Roman Empire and Judaism. Regarding the empire Luke makes clear that, while Christians are not a threat to the established order, the rulers of this world hold their power from Satan, and the essential loyalty of Christ's followers is to God and this world will be the kingdom of God, ruled by Christ the King. Regarding the Jews, Luke emphasizes the fact that Jesus and all his earliest followers were Jews, although by his time the majority of Christ followers were Gentiles, nevertheless, the Jews had rejected and killed the Messiah, and the Christian mission now lay with the Gentiles. Topic. Comparison with other writings The Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke share so much in common that they are called the synoptics, as they frequently cover the same events in similar and sometimes identical language. The majority opinion among scholars is that Mark was the earliest of the three about 70 AD and that Matthew and Luke both used this work in the sayings gospel, known as Q as their basic sources. Luke has both expanded Mark and refined his grammar and syntax, as Mark's Greek writing is less elegant. Some passages from Mark he has eliminated entirely, notably most of chapters 6 and 7, which he apparently felt reflected poorly on the disciples and painted Jesus too much like a magician. Despite this, he follows Mark's narrative more faithfully than does Matthew. Despite being grouped with Matthew and Mark, Luke's Gospel has a number of parallels with the Gospel of John. For example, Luke uses the terms Jews and Israelites. In a way unlike Mark, but like John, the figures of Mary of Bethany and Martha as well as a person named Lazarus although Lazarus of Bethany and the Lazarus of the parable are generally not considered the same person are found only in Luke and John, and at Jesus' arrest, only Luke and John state that the servant's right ear was cut off there are several such small details found only in Luke and John. Topic. See also Authorship of Luke Acts List of Gospels List of omitted Bible verses Marcion Order of St. Luke Synoptic Gospels Synoptic Problem Textual Variants in the Gospel of Luke Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Bibliography Allen, O. Wesley, Jr. 2009. Luke. In Peterson, David L., O'Day, Gale R. Theological Bible Commentary. Westminster John Knox Press. ISBN 9781611640242. Allen, David E. 1988. The New Testament in its Literary Environment. Westminster John Knox Press. ISBN 978-0-664-25018-8. Balch, David L. 2003. Luke. In Dunn, James D. G., Rogerson, John William. Eerdmans Commentary on the Bible. Eerdmans. ISBN 9780802837110. Barton, John, Muddyman, John, 2007. The Oxford Bible Commentary. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-927718-6. Boring, M. Eugene, 2012. An Introduction to the New Testament, History, Literature, Theology. Westminster John Knox Press. ISBN 9780664255923. Buckwalter, Douglas The Character and Purpose of Luke's Christology. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 9780521561808. Burkett, Delbert 
An Introduction to the New Testament and the Origins of Christianity. Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-00720-7. Carroll, John T. Luke, A Commentary. Westminster John Knox Press. ISBN 9780664221065. Charlesworth, James H. The Historical Jesus, An Essential Guide. Abingdon Press. ISBN 9781426723. Carroll, John T. 2000. Cosmology and Eschatology in Jewish and Christian Apocalypticism. Brill. ISBN 978-90-04-11927-7. Dunn, James D. G. 2003. Jesus Remembered. Eerdmans. ISBN 978-0-8028-3931-2. Ehrman, Bart D. The Orthodox Corruption of Scripture, The Effect of Early Christological Controversies on the Text of the New Testament. Oxford University Press. ISBN 978-0-19-510279-6. Ehrman, Bart D. Jesus, Apocalyptic Prophet of the New Millennium. Oxford University Press. Ehrman, Bart D. Lost Christianities, The Battles for Scripture and the Faiths We Never Knew. Oxford University Press. Ellis, E. Earl. 2003. The Gospel of Luke. WIPF and Stock Publishers. Evans, Craig A. 2011. Luke. Baker Books. Gamble, Harry Y. 1995. Books and Readers in the Early Church, A History of Early Christian Texts. Yale University Press. ISBN 978-0-300-06918-1. Green, Joel. 1995. The Theology of the Gospel of Luke. Cambridge University Press. Green, Joel. 1997. The Gospel of Luke. Eerdmans. Holliday, Carl R. 2011. A Critical Introduction to the New Testament, Interpreting the Message and Meaning of Jesus Christ. Abingdon Press. Hurtado, Larry W. 2005. Lord Jesus Christ, Devotion to Jesus in Earliest Christianity. Eerdmans. ISBN 978-0-8028-3167-5. Johnson, Luke Timothy 2010. The New Testament, A Very Short Introduction. Oxford University Press. Losel, Joseph 2010. The Early Church, History and Memory. Continuum. ISBN 978-0-567-16561-9. Miller, Philip M. 2011. The Least Orthodox Reading is to be Preferred. In Wallace, Daniel B. Revisiting the Corruption of the New Testament. Kregel Academic. Morris, Leon. 1990. New Testament Theology. Zondervan. ISBN 978-0-310-45571-4. Perkins, Fame The Synoptic Gospels and the Acts of the Apostles, Telling the Christian Story. In Barton, John. The Cambridge Companion to Biblical Interpretation. Westminster John Knox Press. ISBN 978-0-521-48593-7. Perkins, Fame 2009. Introduction to the Synoptic Gospels. Eerdmans. ISBN 978-0-8028-6553-3. Powell, Mark Allen Jesus as a Figure in History, How Modern Historians View the Man from Galilee. Eerdmans. ISBN 978-0-664-25703-3. Powell, Mark Allen 1989. What Are They Saying About Luke? Paulist Press. Stanton, Vincent Henry 1911. Luke, Gospel of Saint. In Chisholm, Hugh. Encyclopedia Britannica. 17 11th ed. Cambridge University Press. pp. 118-120. Strelin, Rick 2013. Luke the Priest, The Authority of the Author of the Third Gospel. Ashgate Publishing. Talbert, Charles H. 2002. Reading Luke, A Literary and Theological Commentary. Smith and Helways. Thyssen, Gerd, Mers, Annette The Historical Jesus, A Comprehensive Guide. Translated by Bowden, John. Eerdmans. Thompson, Richard P. 2010. Luke Acts, The Gospel of Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. 
In Aoun, David E. The Blackwell Companion to the New Testament. Wiley Blackwell. p. 319. Strecker, Georg. 2000. Theology of the New Testament. Walter de Gruyter. ISBN 978-0-664-22336-6. Twelftree, Graham H. 1999. Jesus the Miracle Worker, A Historical and Theological Study. Intervarsity Press. ISBN 978-0-8308-1596-8. Vanderkam, James C., Flint, Peter W. 2005. The Meaning of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Their Significance for Understanding the Bible, Judaism, Jesus, and Christianity. Bloomsbury Academic. ISBN 0-567-08468-X. Topic external links Online translations of the Gospel of Luke, Bible Gateway 35 languages, 50 versions at gospelcom.net Unbound Bible 100 plus languages, versions at Biola University Online Bible at gospelhall.org Early Christian Writings, Gospel of Luke, Introductions and e-texts French, English Translation Bible, Luke Public Domain Audiobook at LibriVox Various Version Secondary Literature, Gospel of Luke Reading Room, Online Virtual Library Tyndale Seminary Related articles, a brief introduction to Luke Acts is available online. B. H. Streeter, The Four Gospels, A Study of Origins 1924. Wilker, W. 2007, A Textual Commentary on the Gospel of Luke, Pub. Online A very detailed text critical discussion of the 300 most important variants of the Greek text PDF, 467 pages.